look at our awesome fan. Now that we painted it and we blended it in and we framed it around with wood, now it looks fantastic. Uploaded another one of our classic how-to videos. They're still for sale at hauntedhousesupplies.com and you can buy the DVDs. There's how to create your own haunted house, there's how to detail your haunted house, uh, there's like part one, two, three, and four, there's how to gore, there's how to foam carve, there's all kinds of videos and they're all really good. But we're putting this video online for free. Take it away. Here in the darkness, this is our uh, brand new building. It's connected to the darkness. So this video is called How to Create a Haunted House from Scratch. And we got a little head start on you because, uh, uh, you know, we have to. You know, we, uh, it, it made a lot of sense to get a lot of the walls up before we really get going here. So when you're building your haunted house from scratch, which is something that we do a lot here at Halloween Productions and Black Light Attractions, uh, we build haunted houses for people all over the world and sometimes we build these haunted houses in a month, uh, six weeks. We don't have much time to build them and we have to work really fast. So um, we've developed some methods to getting a modular haunted houses done as quickly as possible. Now, if you look behind me, you'll see a facade, okay? You'll also see a lot of bits and pieces of the haunted house scattered all around the edges of the room and everywhere you look there's bits and pieces of this haunted house. Now this may or may not be enough props and whatnot to, to, uh, to detail the inside of this haunted house but we won't know until we get to it. But the reason why we got everything nice and neat off of the sides is because as we start to build the maze we want to if we need to bring something in we want to be able to realize what we have, where it is, get it, and get it in. Eventually, after we get the entire maze up in there, we should be able to get rid of all of this stuff in a matter of a day or two. So, when you're building your own haunted house from scratch, what is the first step? Well, I can tell you the very first step is gonna be to pick a theme, and in this case, we're calling a Silo X and it's a zombie themed attraction that's like a scientific lab, you know, gone wrong. So it's a little bit zombie, a little bit Resident Evil, so on and so forth. The attraction's gonna be about 4,000 square feet. And as you can see, it's way back there. It's only taking up about half of the space. The other half of the space 
Well, part of it's going to be a small queue line. And I'm actually standing in what will be escape room. So there'll be an escape room there, an escape room there, an escape room here, and then that's going to be a lobby for the escape rooms. And uh, one of the reasons why we decided to do the escape rooms and the zombie themed haunted house because we're also going to do zombie laser tag. So this attraction is going to double up as a zombie laser tag arena. So we're actually building it for two different purposes. A haunted house in October and promotional events which will be zombie laser tag. Before you try to do any kind of layout design or anything like that, you definitely want to get your theme down. Okay, so in this case we have, we know we want it to be a zombie laser tag. We also know we want it to be a haunted house during October. So that led us to the idea that, hey, we build a lot of laser tags for people all over the world. So let's incorporate a lot of chain link fence so that you can see people all through, you know, like you can be in one area and you can see in a whole nother area through chain link fence. In other words, so when you're running around here playing laser tag, you can shoot through the chain link fence and shoot people on the other side. Plus, because it's an industrial lab, it'll kind of make sense, you know, like having chain link fence or fences, you know, electric fences in between scenes. So really the next step would be to identify your scenes. Now, one of the ways you can identify your scenes is really simple. What do you already have, okay? Um, when you look around this room like we did a few minutes ago, um, you'll notice that we had hanging zombies, we had um, some control panels already, we had some security things, we had gun racks, we had all kinds of medical equipment, we had uh, these really cool jail doors. There was things that we knew we already had, okay? So uh, we had a real morgue set. So some of these things kind of sort of already said, well, uh, these scenes are, uh, some of these scenes have got to be dictated by some props you already have. But let's just say, for example, you have nothing. So you have to identify a budget. That's the very first thing you're going to want to do when you get to this stage of the game, is to identify a budget because the budget can dictate what kind of scenes you can have. So can you do something really cool? Would you like to have something really cool at the end, at the beginning, in the middle? Um, how many big animations can you buy? How many little animations can you buy? How many props? How much money is it going to cost to theme it? Okay, the labor, so on and so forth. Maybe you have a hundred thousand. Uh, maybe you have fifty thousand dollars in props laying around. So now you got a hundred fifty thousand. The one thing that I think when you're building a haunted house from scratch, it's really important that you figure out how you can stretch your dollar. One of the rules of thumb that I like to do when we're building haunted houses for clients is use the tried and true. The things that you know work, uh, that people love. For example, a spinning tunnel, because we're going to have a spinning tunnel right here. But we're going to do it a little different. We hired a company and they're going to like make the spinning tu tunnel out of corrugated steel to give it more of an industrial look. And then we might beam a laser through the middle of it or something, you know, to make it even more sci-fi. Sci and, you know, we're, we're dealing with 4,000 square feet. Well, guess what? A black hole tunnel gobbles up two, 300 square feet when it's all said and done. And it's a tried and true scene because it really works. Obviously, we've identified five, $6,000 is already gone because we're gonna have to do that. We also decided that uh, to give it that wow factor, we would buy you know, two or three giant animations. Yes, I know they're not scary. Okay, everybody knows they're not scary, but they give it that wow factor. They give it that, when you see the movie like Resident Evil or something like that, they always have tons of little zombies that run around and try to kill you or animated dog, or not animated dogs, but you know, like CGI type dogs uh, or whatever that are, you know, infected. But they always have that big giant killer, you know, that drags around the big hammer or the big ax. So I think that just kind of sort of gives it the wow factor. So for our haunted house, we decided to do three different uh, big animations and we're getting them all from uh, uh, Unit 70. So oh, that, that added about $18,000. So, you know, th that's where we're headed right now. So then, then from there, we're looking at how many medium sized animations that might actually scare somebody. So one of the things that we decided we were going to do a dog kennel because one of my favorite scenes in Resident Evil was the Dobrin Pinchers and the possessed dogs coming after people. So I, I had Unit 70 make a custom animated dogzilla kind of thing and then we're going to buy some dog props. We're going to try to make a dog kennel like the guard dogs that you would have in a science lab to keep people out. So that kind of like said, hey, there's one scene. 
We're gonna have a security room, and that's another scene. We're gonna have the spinning tunnel. We're gonna have our three rooms that's gonna feature our big giant animations. That's a no brainer. I already said we had a morgue, so we're gonna build a morgue. Uh, I think a research center should obviously have some kind of like autopsy room or something where they're, you know, performing experiments on, you know, the living or the dead, whatever it is. And then we've seen a lot of zombie movies where zombies are chained up or caged up, you know, because they take them out, you know, to experiment on them, maybe to find a, a you know, a cure or whatever. So we decided to do some jails that are going to be really cool where you grab onto the bars and you can shake them. They're going to be hinged on the floor. And then on the top, they're going to have like an inch on the side so the actor can bang them. They'll be, obviously, they'll be zombies. But we also thought, oh, you know, let's do a freezer because the freezer is really easy. You can hang bodies and that'll be cheap. So we actually went again to our, one of our favorite companies, Unit 70. We asked them, hey, instead of just making hanging bodies, can you make hanging mutated humans, okay? He said, oh yeah, that'll be fun. So we decided we'll, we'll do one scene there because it was easy, because we picked out a handful of complicated scenes uh, in terms of like, hey, they're gonna cost a lot of money. Um, so we have to do offset that with some easy and cheap scenes as well. So basically we picked out all of our our scenes so we know what our scenes are going to be so we have a good idea we don't have to necessarily do drawings per se but we have an idea that hey if we're going to use that spider animation it's so big right so uh the next stage of the game is to do a blueprint and as you can see i have two blueprints here and i'm going to tell you just how important these big blueprints are because whenever you make these blueprints, you literally can change them a hundred times because you can be like, okay, like here is what we call a scare box, a nice big square, okay? So obviously we want people come in here, they move through there, okay. Um, we had already decided this is gonna be like a, a moving subway car that they go through. It's gonna be on motion bags. It's gonna be our big, big scene. It's gonna be like a crashed, subway like a transportation system through you know to get you from the surface down to this research lab so we, we have this scare box so what are we going to put in it you know how are the actors going to intermingle there okay that's where you bring in your second one okay so we have color codes for everything because you just never know who is working on this from one day to the next so there can't be any confusion so you make these color codes well, this is what we do. So everywhere where you see yellow, okay, these are scare boxes or access hallways. So one of the key things that I believe to making a good haunted house from scratch is having access. If this is a haunted house that's gonna go in a tent, okay, you can make a thousand exits. I mean, you don't need an access corridor around the perimeter because it already has access to the outside. So let's just say there was an emergency. We have a door here that got in here. So we wanna have exit points um, all through the maze. So you could be like say in this section of the maze, okay, and you could be in this room and then you can like dart out here and get out. You could be over here in this spider scene. There's a problem. You go through here, here, down the hallway, out. That's very, very, very important. So when you get ready to build your haunted house, okay, I highly suggest that you set up a table like the one that i was working on with the blueprints over there um, so that you can build your walls it's easier to build your walls on a table and some sort of jig um, so you can pop them together the very first thing that i would do once i know exactly what i'm going to do is i would start building walls and start setting the walls up you can build walls out of drywall if you want i don't recommend it because it's hard to theme drywall and people kick holes in it and everything else what you would prefer to use is plywood okay and you can treat it with a fire retardant paint whatever um, and plywood really doesn't burn that well okay that's not where a fire is going to start in your haunted house you always want to try to convince your fire marshal whenever you can to use plywood because it's stronger it's easier to theme it's easier to work with um, it, i mean like i said it's definitely stronger you can even buy treated plywood that's already treated with fire retardants built in okay um, we use, whenever we can, um, two by threes, um, and you can turn them on their side so they're nice and flat. That'll make the wall a little bit thinner. It just depends on what kind of wall you're building. A lot of, a lot of times we're in, uh, incorporating CGI effects, 
so we can't make thin walls because we have to cut holes in walls so we can put TV. So then we have to use two by fours to make the wall a little thicker so the TV can fit in. It really just depends on what you're ultimately trying to achieve. One of the things I'm gonna tell you, and this is absolute fact, you don't want to build your haunted house, build all the walls and all that stuff, and then go hunting for the props you need. No, because I'm telling you the fastest easiest way and cheapest way to build your haunted house is not to do it in stages but to try to do it as fast as possible so it's very important that you put your whole entire team and i'm talking about everybody on the walls and try to get them built and up as fast as possible the next step that you would want to do is to put up your facade okay which you can see right here um, in our case, what we did was we actually built the facade first and then we built the maze behind it. There's two ways that you can build a maze to make sure you get it right. You can build it from the corner, the back corner up to the facade because let's say you just made a mistake by a foot, okay? It would be easier to take this facade and move it this way, okay? <laughs> rather than you to put the facade up and build it back to the wall and realize, wait a minute, we needed another six inches, okay? So it would actually be better for you to start up against the exit, start putting your maze together from the exit forward. Now, we moved our facade a couple times, okay? Because it really wasn't that difficult to move. It took a lot of people to move it, but we built the facade and then we built the maze. But we built the maze from the back forward. So we could actually, and we did have to do this, we had to move our facade a little forward or a little backwards. So we built our entire haunted house and then we just pushed the facade up against it where it ended. So on this side, we have queue line and so on and so forth. So we have plenty of room to work with, but we don't have a lot of room to work with against the wall. So if we built it from this way going back and we realized we needed four inches, six inches, whatever, it would be almost impossible to do it because you'd have to move the entire maze. So that's a very, very, very vital tip. Uh, you know, once you start building your walls and stuff, hey, you know, do you have anything that you can use, okay? And we just happen to have, you know, this mesh steel wall. We have some cinder block walls. We have some broken walls. We have these already made um, animated door fans. And you see we've got a nice little vent up there. Okay, we want to try to figure out, hey, what do we got? What do we got? What can we use? What can we use? You know, hey, we're going to try to use some old zombies that we've done videos where we've shown you how to bring them back to life if they're old. You need to have all your props ready to go. Okay, you don't want to go hunting for them after the fact. You want to have them ready to go when you need them. You want to have your vacuum form if you're going to use vacuum form. And by the way, in the darkness, we use very little vacuum form. We try to build everything real. But this is a modular haunted house and we're doing it on a budget and we're building it from scratch and we only have 30, 40 days to get the whole thing done. That's what we're gonna do the whole thing in. So vacuum form comes in really, really handy. So we're gonna show you how we're gonna use that, but we've already showed you in a lot of videos before. You know, hey, what can go in an industrial? Well, you know, these really cool fans look industrial, those uh, squirrel fans over there, these really cool lights, these, uh, ropes and pulleys uh there's stuff over there i mean there's a there's a concrete mixer i mean who knows we got cabinets where files for patients might be stored we have sinks because they should go in labs so what we did was before we built anything we went hunting down all the props we needed because once we identified our sinks and we ordered all the vacuum form we ordered all the materials that we would need we have boxes and boxes of tile which in the darkness we would go all tile, but here we're gonna use a combination of tile board and real tiles to make it a little cheaper, a little faster. But it's very important that you have all your materials here. Sure, you're not gonna have them all, but you're gonna get really, really far and nothing's gonna slow you down once you start working. Because you can literally spend four hours going after materials and then you're not, uh, you're losing synergy, you're losing, um, you know, com you know, like control, you know, people aren't working as hard, you know, they're waiting around. You don't want that. You want to try to have all your materials on site. And as you can see, when you look around this room, you can see a lot of stuff piled in a horseshoe all over the place. Okay. And that's really important. Have all your materials ready to go. Now, when you're building your haunted house from scratch, 
okay, and you're not like stuck in the 80s just constantly renovating something that's been there for a long time. It's really easy to think through every problem you've ever had with a haunted house. And when I say every problem, I mean any problem that you wish that if you can, you know, know then, know now what you knew then. Okay, wait a minute. Know then what you know now, or whatever it is. Uh, you could make a lot of changes. For example, this corridor, as you can see, all the way down, is an access corridor. Okay, none of the customers will walk in this access corridor. This access corridor right here is very, very vital. Okay because we are trying to create easy access to the emergency exit. This corridor goes all the way down to the emergency exit and instead of building the haunt all the way to the back wall, we left a four foot corridor there as well. So if you're in the uh, far corner, you can get out, make your way to the exit. And if you're anywhere along this wall, you can get out and, um, and you can you know get to the exit and get through this corridor. Now it's very important that Hey, you know, you can build your walls and you can not put in door jams, which if you come with me, you'll see that if you're in this area right here, okay, you can actually get out of this area and you can get in the access corridor. Believe it or not, even though this access corridor and this one right here are side by side, they're in two completely different corners of the haunted house, believe it or not. So, but you can come down here and you can get out again. It's uh, kind of dark in here. Uh, you can get out here. You can get out here. And as you can see, you'll be able to get out that far corner, and you'll be able to get out a couple different spots. You'll be able to walk your way down. And unfortunately, uh, we have to knock this wall out and put an emergency door in it. And then we have to put a staircase right there, which that's all part of the plan. We're also gonna have to move these pipes because they're kind of in the way and we have to cut some pipes out. You know, that's all part of building a haunted house. But make sure when you're building a haunted house, not only do you have an access corridor, at least around two sides of it, but make sure that you also make cut-throughs. So when you go through the haunted house, you want to be able to go from the very beginning to the very exit, all the way in the left or all in the right, within a minute or so. Um, and you disguise these with uh, theming. Like, uh, for example, you can get clear uh, freezer tiles and then paint them all oily and everything. So, you know, you know you're not supposed to go through there, okay, or whatever. So you can disguise them or whatever, but it's really important for the safety of your, your customers, the sa safety of your actors, so that you know a pathway to cut through the haunted house very quickly and get to one of these access corridors to get out in case of an emergency. A couple uh, more things before we get real crazy building this haunted house. You'll see that another thing that we did was we also painted the maze on the floor so that our employees, the people, our, our construction workers, so they kind of had a general idea of where the haunted house goes. Now these little dots represent chain link fence. This is going to be a chain link fence. Now this is really cool. Uh, we have this lift. It looks kind of industrial and we can't get rid of it. And we got to have access to it. So we decided to chain link it in rather than wall it in. Why not leave it exposed? Because it looks industrial. It's really cool. And let me show you this. In this old building, it had this really cool hood. Okay. We actually cut it out of the ceiling and we built like this base for it. And uh, it's just too cold not to reuse. So we definitely want to reuse it. Now look up in the ceiling and you see this really cool pipe. You know, you want to try to utilize stuff in these little buildings. We're going to cut that out and bring it down into the scene and screw it on a wall. And it'll really gobble up almost the whole entire room and make it look really, really sick. Now look at this thing over here. Now this is just too cool. This is some kind of grain tile, some kind of machine. We don't have no clue what it is. But what we did decide was it's just too cool to, to take out. So, hey, don't be afraid if there's something cool, something that looks industrial, to leave it in there when you're designing your maze. Design around it. So as you can see here, you're gonna come through. 
this door jam and you're going to walk right into this big thing and people are going to think hey this place is real it's real metal it's real everything it looks really cool so don't be afraid if your building has some unique features to incorporate them into the maze design but they got to be incorporated in the blueprint phase once you get your whole maze up and installed and one of the things you may or may not notice when we were walking around that there's no chain link in here okay we didn't put the chain link in on purpose because we want to get all the walls in and we want to paint them all black because we don't want to paint our chain link black we want to paint it rusty so we don't want to paint it black so we want to get our entire maze painted with like a uh, you know a fire coating paint of some kind so we paint everything black we paint it all black before we do anything so as you can see some of it's painted black some of it's not we ran out of paint so we're gonna get in here and paint everything black but I want to mention to you these little markers are really important really important uh, when you're building your haunted house from scratch why because you know like we made a note right here we said add you know to door jams add you know to the door jam so if somebody knows like right here we need to add a door jam a cut through and then right here you can see a square it says drop picture okay so we drew that in here so we know hey we've decided we're going to add that there okay and you can take these markers and you can make notes and say remove wall whatever okay and you can make notes and it makes it easier especially at the end of the day when you're trying to figure out what you're going to do and you're frustrated whatever you can go make notes and uh, that really makes a big impact. Now, one really important uh, tip I'm gonna give you. When you put your maze up, do not secure it. Do not secure the maze. Our maze is wobbly, okay? As you can see, wobbly, okay? And you're probably thinking, that's not safe. Well, it's wobbly for a reason, okay? Because we wanna theme the walls, we want to drag props in here, and even though these walls are 10 feet tall, if, you're, if your walls are 8 feet tall and you're only doing 8 feet walls, you definitely don't want to secure the walls because you want to paint everything, theme everything, bring all your props in, put them in place, then secure the walls. Why? Because you'll be doing this number, you know, down, trying to bring a ladder in, boom, boom, you know, it's hitting the things, it's slowing everything down, people are dropping stuff. Don't ever secure your walls. Look. The walls are secured to the walls. Are these walls safe for customers? No, they're not. You put a bunch of people in here, they're running into walls, they're breaking everything, right? But for you and your crew building, this wobble is plenty fine. It's plenty fine, okay? Until you get the whole thing themed, the whole thing with all your props, everything in here, and let's also add one more thing. Get your electric in, get your safety equipment in, get everything in because um, a lot of times we like to build a haunted house, we like to put the electric in first, the safety in first, but we didn't do that this time. Uh, there's a reason for it, but normally we would rather do that first. But electrician, he's doing the same thing. He's carrying ladders around. There's no need to secure this haunted house until it's done. And what you do when you secure it is you start from the beginning and everywhere there's wobbly, shaky, you know, you put braces on. And by the time you get to the very end, everything's secured to everything and it literally won't move. And there's a really even no need to secure it to the floor either, even though that moves. Once the whole thing is secured with props, nothing will move. But if you really feel the need, you can drop a, um, you know, like a concrete nail you know, in there, a spot here and there, right into the ground. Don't do brackets, just uh, fire a, a concrete nail right through the ground. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start finishing painting the whole haunted house black. Then we're gonna start applying the wall scenic stuff. And then after we put, uh, you know, put our steel, our tile and everything, then we're gonna paint the whole thing. It's gonna be completely painted. Then we're going to bring our props in, kind of sort of roughly get them in where they're going to go, and then we're going to finish it up. So um, we're going to get back to work. We're going to paint it black. We're going to finish getting our chain link in and everything else, and then we'll come back and uh, see the next step. Okay, we've gotten pretty far with our um, zombie-themed haunted house, and we are purposely doing this attraction. I mean, literally, DIY, do it yourself, because um, first off, we don't have time. <laughs> to do elaborate scenes. We can build a scene in the darkness and you've seen that in some of our other videos. You've seen where, I mean, literally like the library. I mean, we spent six weeks building that library. 
and we're going to build this whole entire haunted house in six weeks and that's crazy in order to do that we've got to use ready-made materials we've got to use a lot of vacuum form and we've got to use a lot of um you know materials that uh you know are already they are, they're not real, but they're close enough, like vacuum form or tile board or whatever. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you into some of the rooms and show you how we tried to make something that, you know, it, there's an old saying, you know, put lipstick on a pig, okay? And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to make something that's not what we would use in the darkness, but we're gonna try to make it look really good. So let's go in and check out what we've done to some of the scenes. I'm gonna show you how to do something really, really, really cheap. So you see the plywood walls, really simple. We got textured vacuum form, and it doesn't look great right now. It needs trim on the bottom, okay? But we don't wanna go over abundance of the uh, vacuum form. So you can see we went ahead and squared off big sections on top. So we'll make that flush concrete. We'll spray this whole thing with some concrete texture. And when it's all said and done, it's gonna look fabulous, it's gonna look real, and it's gonna be cheap. Vacuum form's cheap. Everybody, when you're building a haunted house, has to have walls, right? So what are you gonna do to the walls? We're gonna do something that looks complex, but cheap. Okay, so it's plywood, it's decked out in one by threes, it's got vacuum form, just stapled to the wall. We're gonna cover it in synergy. Every door jam, as you can see, is nice and framed, and we added uh, some dimension to the, the door jam by making it you know, slanted and whatnot. And you see the little squares above, okay? So yes, this is just a hallway, but hallways are important. But this is cheap. This is cheap. Doing this little hallway was not even a day's worth of work. And you're, I mean, you're talking about pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar, okay? And it doesn't hurt to have this side, from, you know, what we're doing is on this side, it's gonna be, as you can see, chain link fence. So we wanna see people getting scared over there, people running this way. And I think it adds a little bit more confusion and it's a little bit different. And that's the whole point of this haunted house. We want to do it different. We don't want it to be like the darkness. We want it to be something different. So we are trying to do it quick. We're trying to do it fast. And we're trying to use as many different types of wall texturing as we can. And we're trying to do it as cheap as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some kind of before after kind of stuff. So you see, this is just tile board, okay? This is really cheap tile board. Uh, that you would put in a bathroom renovation where you literally are broke and don't have a penny to your name uh, Because normally you would use tile. Okay, if you were doing it really nice. So what we've done here is we've used Tile board because it's eating up a lot of space and by the way We built the bathroom in the darkness and it's all real tile. Okay, it's all real tile but we are trying to do a 4,000 square foot haunted house and we're trying to make it all look detailed, like maybe it's we've had this haunted house for 10 years, but we really only had it for six weeks. So what we're doing is a little quicker, we're using tile board mixed with real tile. Now that's grout, where the tiles fell out. So you cut big chunks of the tile board out, as you can see up here as well, and then you mix in um, broken pieces of tile. And we'll probably add some more pieces there as well. If you want to, again, put lipstick on a pig, so to speak, you would use a lot of one by threes, one by fours, one by sixes, and trim everything out. Now this isn't finished, okay? But um, anytime you add a whole lot of trim, whether it be one by three, whatever, and in the in the darkness, we, I mean, we're using really expensive trim. And over here, one by twos, one by threes, one by fours, one by sixes. Now look at this wall and you see it's not trimmed at the top. You're gonna see when we get in the haunted house where we trim the top and you're gonna see the difference. See what it looks like now? And then we're gonna show you what it looks like in a minute. Now come in this room, because this is really important, because I wanna show it to you. This is vacuum form. You can see I can push on that, and the whole idea is that it's cinder block. But what we've done, and we're not gonna show you, because we've done it so many times in so many videos, where you see the cinder block, and we caked on a whole bunch of concrete. We've done that here, so when you touch it, it feels real. And, and where there's seams, you see I'm pushing on it, and it's wet. Wherever there's seams, we put in extra concrete, okay? Now, Look at these corners and look at this door jam. This door jam looks pretty bad. Look at the tops. A lot of haunted houses would leave it at that because they would think, hey, it's good enough, okay? And you know what? For our average haunted house, it would be. But you know what? We're, we're trying to make it look really cool. Here in a second, I'm gonna show you how it looks a lot better with just a little bit of one by four, which is, by the way, super cheap. So remember this, okay, and look how, oh yeah, it does look cool because we made the door jam with the 
the slants on it because we're doing a, a military facility or whatever, and so we're trying to give it a little bit more of a military look on a DYI type of budget. Now, but as we move in here, this is just plywood with pieces of vacuum form brick with synergy around it. You'll see bigger chunks, smaller chunks, but again, you don't see the trim on the top and you don't see the trim around the door jam. This is really cheap. This is just plywood, two by twos, one by twos, and some really cool vacuum form light up type of pieces. And it's got little bits of uh, uh, concrete all over the place to give it a feel of rust or whatever. But again, you see this room and you look around this room and you see no trims on the top, no trims coming down the side and so on and so forth. Um, this is a room that's got a lot more work to do. We got more pieces that are gonna go up and we got really cool CGI's that we're gonna put in the, the video screens. It's gonna look great. So let's go in some areas where we have added the trim so you can see the difference. You can see here another door jam with no trim and we see the same thing, just synergying up the plywood with little bits and pieces of vacuum form brick. It looks really cool. Here's more brick. Busted out, looks great, but we also see that the um, the door jam itself is trimmed out. So a lot of times when people make door jams, they might make them nice and square, it looks really ridiculous. So this takes a little bit of extra work, but it actually looks kind of military or industrial. Now just by simply adding this real simple one by three piece of trim, tell me it doesn't look a thousand times better. This is gonna be an area where an actor jumps out of a window or whatever and scares people. We've used vacuum, or we've used uh, corrugated steel, which you can buy at a department store, and it's really cheap. And as you can see, we went ahead and made all the walls 12 foot tall because we wanna get more, um, or 10 foot tall. We were making everything look you know, higher, bigger, more impressive. But you can see on the tops, we've added trim. And you can see on the bottom, we've added trim. You can see on the door jams, we've added trim. On an area where an actor might jump out, we've added trim. So as we look around the room, and of course the room's not done, but of course we go over the top and we add the concrete look. Here and there, splattered, and it's all painted. And so now we've got a nice, beautiful looking room right here with some really cheap one by six, one by three, one by four. We put it on the floor, we put it around the door jams everywhere. And now this room really actually looks like something. So when we start putting props in here and then some trickery with some lighting, it's gonna look like a real industrial lab. And that's what we're shooting for. Now, one of the things that we're doing to try to make this as cheap as possible, as you're gonna see over here, uh, we've got chain link fence, we're gonna add all kinds of cool signs. This sign's actually backward. But we're gonna, we're gonna make these chain link fence look rusty. Now this is really cool, by the way, and I wanna point this out. You see back there, that's a lift, okay? Now, it's actually dangerous because if I was to come over here and fall down there, <laughs> I would get hurt. So this is a lift that happens to be in our building where you can lift things from the first floor to the second floor. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have a space open for our lift so when we bring stuff up, we can you know, still do that. So we didn't want to uh, not have our lift still. But what we decided to do was go ahead and incorporate the lift because it looks cool. It looks industrial. So we surrounded it in chain link fence and we're gonna paint it and we even put theming behind it and I think this is fantastic. So you've got like some really cool stuff in your building like this. Most of the time people would actually hide it. You know, hey, we're gonna put a wall in front of it. But no, no, why not use it, utilize it and keep it because it's a really cool prop. There's another thing that was in this old building was this, you know, I don't even know what it is. It's like a hood of some kind. So we just built this nice little base. We're, we're not going crazy. It's vacuum form, it's trim. And I guess we're gonna put a bunch of, you know, blood and guts you know in there and you know we're going to figure it out as we go along we see the vacuum form which is cheap by the way covered in concrete painted to look like brick but now you've got the trim and what we decided to do is break it up because this is really important to break it up break it up so you got your brick here and then we'll make these little square rectangle whatever um, and put trim around it and just make it look like concrete we're trying to break it all up all trimmed out looks much 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 better so now we're in what we're gonna we're gonna call a freezer okay 
And by the way, when, it, when, you, when we get farther in this video, you're gonna see like on this door right here, it's very important that you go out and find a door, okay, from one of these places and put a real freezer door. Bolt it on here, open it up against the wall. Same thing on this side, door, you know, it looks like it's, you know, closed or whatever. But I wanna show you again, cheap vacuum form, as you can see, you can push right on it. But by putting the baseboard on it, first off, that protects it from getting ripped off the wall because people will kick this, they won't kick the vacuum form. The more that they kick the vacuum form on the bottom, the more chance there is of it getting ripped or pulled off the wall, next thing you know, big chunks are coming off. And you see we have it framed on the top and we have it framed in the corner. What does that do? It breaks it up, okay? Now, when you look over here, we had a nice little uh, door jam in here and we made it all concrete. Now, we're gonna put hanging bodies and boom, this room will be done in 10 minutes, a couple crates in the corner and it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. But when you look up there, when you buy these fans at these junk stores, when you make these headers, look at this beautiful header, okay? You want to put headers in everywhere because otherwise it looks like a haunted house. You want to always have these headers like in hallways, the front and the back of every hallway. You want to have like a header. And anytime you go up 10 feet, you want to buy these types of fans. I mean, I paid 20 bucks for that. I framed it in and it looks fantastic. It makes the place look more industrial. Look at this. We cut a hole. We took just this, I bought like remnant pieces of this steel and it just makes it look like, I don't know, it's, it's more industrial. I mean, you gotta break it up and you gotta have these kinds of things here and there. And then again here you see lots and lots of trim, the floors, and again, now we now our scenes look way more bigger, way more industrial because we have, we're able to see right into our lift. And then of course we're gonna have this big animation in here. Now we talked earlier about this big pipe being up in the ceiling, okay? And we cut it out of the ceiling because nobody would see it there. And we made a header out of it. A, like, a, you know, it, it covers the door jam. I mean, look how cool that is. You put a fog machine in there, you bolt that in. I mean, that's priceless. So you've got these old factories and you got this stuff up in the roof. We just cut it off, we screw it into the wall. It's gonna be fantastic. I mean, you, you can't get better than that. So we've been using this corrugated steel, as you can see, and we're framing the corrugated steel in on the floors in the corners, around the door jams, around the tops, okay? And then what we'll do, we're gonna come back, we're gonna put texture on here by throwing some synergy here and there, which kind of sort of seems like rust. Some synergy on here, and we'll paint it, it's gonna look fantastic. This corrugated steel is covering a lot of wall. You don't have to have plywood walls anywhere in your haunted house. Now in this case, it's not a haunted mansion, it's an industrial, you know, like military, you know, secret, lab, whatever. This is a great material to use, but you can't use it and not break it up with trim. Trim on the bottom, trim on the sides, trim around the door jams, trim everywhere, and that's what it's gonna take. And as you can see, this is a big room, and it's all done the same way, and we broke it up with a chain link fence maze. Hey, there's nothing scarier than seeing an actor somewhere and he's chasing people around and then people react to other people being scared. So rather than having nothing but maze, we're having chain link fence and we think it's gonna have a great reaction for the actors. Okay, so we were talking about things we've been utilizing in the building. And again, look at this sucker. This, yes, we could move it, we could remove it, but when we designed it on paper, uh, we designed around this big thing. You can't replace this thing. This thing is so cool. Now, you're not gonna be able to make one of these in your haunted house, that's not the point. The point is that if you have stuff like this and it's just super cool, build it into a scene because you can't buy, I mean, look, this is a creep, you know, they're burning, you know, I mean, who knows what this thing is, but it's just so impressive that we had to keep it. Okay, so we're in another room that I'm not really that fond of. This room is too green. It doesn't look good. Um, you can see we've been adding some synergy here and there. We still have to grout all of this and put in a few extra bricks. But I'll tell you, when you look at this room, just look, so look around this room. It's so green and it's so plain. And I'll tell you, a lot of haunted houses I've seen would do just what I've done right here. Like for example, I hate this wall because that should have had a big chunk taken out of it up there and or a fan installed you know those fans i was talking about that would have been a great spot for a fan so i'm going to make sure that that gets done <laughs> okay and we're going to come back to this scene but this needs trim that needs trim trim down there trim here and you know what take it one more farther because we got to break up all this tile we need trim going down the middle 
for sure. And we should paint the bottom green and the top white to break it up, okay? And this is a perfect example of something that just doesn't look that good, but we're gonna make it look better, okay? We're gonna make it look better by adding trim on the floor, trim on the top, uh, molding down the middle, the, the tiles here and there. We're gonna make the bottom green and the top white, and that's how it's gonna look better. Now, in the end, we're gonna add pipes everywhere, props, and everything else, and that's when it'll really start singing. And one of the biggest things too that we may not be able to get to is to start putting roofs in and pieces of roofs. That'll really seal the deal. But this is room right here is a perfect example of what not to do. This looks typical of haunted houses that I've seen um, that don't put enough work, enough attention to the detail. And we're gonna make this room right here look much better. What we're outstanding right now is we're installing a tunnel that we bought. Hey, you've seen these in a hundred haunted houses, and you know, hey, when you're building a haunted house from scratch, let me just give you some advice. You want to try to gobble up space. A black hole tunnel gobbles up about 200 square feet. It's an effect, it works, it works really well, people love it. So why mess, you know, with the apple cart, okay? Uh, we did have ours changed up a little bit. We had him build ours a little stronger, so it's gonna have corrugated steel on it, rather than those canvas pieces which would look just standard. So this black hole tunnel will have corrugated steel. But the reason why I'm standing here showing you this black hole tunnel, which you've seen many, many times before, is because, hey, people love it, it eats up a lot of space, and you need cool stuff in your haunted house. So when you're gonna splurge on something expensive, like, you know, this was expensive, you know, you know, whenever this is all done, I mean, you know, six, eight thousand dollars, it's worth it because it's an impact type of thing. And there's other impact type of things like uh, squeeze walls here, there, whatever. I mean, they can eat up space and people like them. So I highly advise a black hole tunnel near the exit. Um, and if you're going to splurge on one or two things, this is a great thing to splurge on. Now, if you already have a haunted house, you got four of these already everywhere else, it's probably not a good idea. But if it makes sense, it makes sense. They make sense in 3D haunted houses all day long. Does it make sense in here? Yes, it does because, you know, hey, it's an industrial complex, so you've seen all kinds of movies where there's tunnels and things happening in tunnels or lasers, and we can have this and we can shoot a laser down the middle of it or whatever, and it's gonna be fantastic. And we thought a little outside the box by putting the corrugated steel on, uh, on the rings, and I think that's gonna make it a little different. But that's what you need to be thinking about in your haunted house. Try to buy big things and gobble up a lot of space, and that saves you a lot of time. What we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to show you how to build a haunted house from scratch really cheap. Now, the haunted house we're building is gonna have a lot of cool effects. So it's gonna be a really cool effect. It's one big effect, it's a subway car. And let me tell you, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, let me tell you. But the whole idea is, and as we've already explained, when you go in the darkness, we're using real bricks, we're using real everything. And what we're doing here is a combination of the two. So I wanna show you a wall that's been finished, painted. This is cheap cardboard. This is not real tile. This is like cardboard, compressed cardboard or something, okay? This is real tile right here. So this is a finished product. You can see how low this is and see how much the tile sticks out more. Okay, that's because this is fake, this is real. So when you're trying to do something super, super, super fast and super cheap, um, you gotta use a combination. And we're trying to build a haunted house from scratch here. That means we have very little time. And by the way, we're building the whole thing in like a month. I mean, it's crazy. When you come and see it, if you come to the one of the darkness haunted house tours or something like that, you'll get to walk through it and you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. But remember, it was built in a month. So really all this is, is panel board, with big chunks cut out, grout, and then pieces of tile here and there. By the way, you know, when you when you get the tile, you drop them and get a bunch of pieces so you could have whole ones and pieces and everything else. And as you can see over here, yeah, it's it's certainly not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a it's a combination of concrete and tiles. And as we've said, the the trimming out really makes a big difference. Now when we look up here, you can see we've got trim in the corners, here and here. We put concrete even on the cheap tile board and heck, you can even see how much water got on it and it's already starting to pop up. But it looks really nice. And the whole idea is that 
you're doing it cheap. And by the way, this is super cheap. Okay, so the last time we looked at this scene, it wasn't quite done, but it's now it's starting to look really cool. Uh, we saw how we gave a different look. We got the vacuum form bricks, we put concrete on it, and we got these little patches up here, which are kind of neat. And this is really neat too, how we've incorporated the real steel beams. But what I wanted to show you was, yes, you can make a haunted house really cheap. Remember, we did, we left our hood in here, and then we made this like really, we don't even know what it is, but we're gonna make it full of body parts and everything else. But look at this scene now. All we've added was 15, 10 crates. And if you walk through here, you can see how you kind of sort of make an S through here. And with these simple, very simple crates, we've made a pathway through here and we've cut down a whole lot of space. And it actually is starting to look like a scene by simply adding crates. And you're also gonna see over here, we've purchased a lot of barrels. We will paint them and we will theme them. Okay, and it's looking really cool just by having just crates here and there. And look at this really cool piece that we bought for like 30 bucks. We're gonna mount it to the floor. It just looks really cool. There are so many things to making a haunted house from scratch, but I will tell you the number one rule is that when you're trying to fill space, barrels and crates are really, you know, they're, they're space fillers and they look kind of natural. You can make pathways through big rooms. But the biggest thing that you need when you're building your haunted house from scratch, and it's imperative, you've got to have real props. It's not the big monsters or any of that stuff. It's the real props, the real stuff, like this thing right here that I paid 30 bucks. Nobody wants that, it's a scrapper. But for 30 bucks, I mean, it looks authentic, it looks real, it looks crazy. Look at how neat this looks now. You know, we've got our lift that was part of our building. We incorporated a chain link fence, and now we can see this, thing that looks pretty neat we've shoved barrels in here and by the way we will paint those we have a couple crates and we'll put some monsters in here our lift's still functional okay we can get in there we can use it okay but now it looks like a scene and that's the whole idea when you're trying to do something cheap and you have one of these existing buildings there's just no way you can replace something that's already there incorporate it into your scenes so now we're in a room that again was done very cheap this is very cheap cinder block. As you can see, I can push through it. But if I run my hand across it, it's actually very rough because we've, we've uh, hazed it with concrete. Now I want to stress this video, we're not going to sit here and show you how we've already done all this. You have to buy how to detail your haunted house part one, two, three, four, whatever. Because in every one of those videos, we talk about how to texture things, how to paint things. This video is how to build a haunted house cheap, okay? Now, when last we saw this room, which is gonna be a freezer, which by the way, bodies like this are gonna hang in here, we didn't have it trimmed out. It looks so much better now. See, we put the trim on the bottom, the trim's in the corner, the trim's on the top, okay? It's looking so much more spectacular. And I can tell you right now, and this is very important, when you're trying to keep, and I'm sure you've used vacuum form before and it wouldn't stay on the wall, one of the reasons it doesn't is because you don't have trim on the bottom. People kick the bottoms, they knock it loose, they keep banging it, and that shakes it and vibrates it, and it starts falling off the wall. You have to have it trimmed on the top, trimmed on the bottom, trimmed in the corners, because that helps hold it on the wall. Now, as we turn down this hallway, this is painted so much better than last we saw. Before, it was this hot red. The yellow was like a hot yellow. Now it's all aged down. Look at, look at how beautifully it's all coming together. It looks real. I swear to God, it looks real. This all looks so spectacular. And then we will put freezer strips, clear ones, and we'll age those down. And here's the key. If we're gonna go to another level, which we're not gonna go to another level on this particular haunted house, not in a month, it really needs ceilings, okay? It needs something. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna add camo net because camo net will give us a false sense that there's a ceiling up there. But there's so much more we could do with the ceiling. There's so much more that we could do to just make, just to make it pop. We could do pipes in these rooms for days. And pipes are great. You buy pipes right at your you know, local department store and you buy elbows and tees and you start screwing to the wall and you 
pays them with concrete and then you make them look rusty and they fill space. Another thing that really fills space is electrical boxes. You can buy tons and tons and tons of electric boxes. You can put one here, you can put one there. I mean, there's no end to where you can put them. Last we talked, this was literally uh, on this wall. This room wasn't finished painted. And we did have these barrels and crates in here and we did have our spider monster together. Now, this isn't how the room's gonna go. This is an idea. One of the things you need to focus on when you're making your haunted house from scratch, okay? Hey, you see these crates? They move, okay? The barrels move. When it becomes time to run it as a haunted house, you don't want them to move. You don't want these crates to move. But I don't wanna screw them down. Not until I have a rough idea that I like it, okay? And number two, and most importantly, I bought a lot of stuff. Okay, I bought stuff from Unit 70, Ghost Ride, Gordler, all these people. I bought all this cool stuff. So until I get my dead bodies and my other animations and stuff, I might come in here and go, you know, this is a good spot for an animation because I can move this barrel. I can get this crate out just a little farther and then see how like a person can be in here and animation can be in here too. And I can still get around. Oh, I don't have enough space, okay? So we're gonna take this and we're gonna move it and we're gonna adjust it. But what we've done is we've kind of done like an idea of how to maneuver through this wall or this room. So we're gonna add some props and we're gonna add some other stuff. And I think it's gonna look fantastic. We're obviously we're gonna paint these barrels, but these walls are barren. They need pipes, they need electrical boxes and so on and so forth. But look around this room. Now you can literally see it being a scene and it looks really good that's the thing it looks really good the way it is but guess what it was cheap now can we go to another level yes we can have a ceiling on it we can have all kinds of cool stuff in here we don't have to have all that we can have other cooler stuff but we're trying to build this on a house on a budget so i think it's looking fantastic and i just want to mention that yes this big guy right here he's an animation from a really good company called unicepi he's not scary Okay, there's nothing, he looks scary, but he's not scary. No one's really going to be afraid of him, per se, okay? But what he, what he does is he adds something to your haunted house. You want to have one or two pieces like that to give some punch, okay? To give a little bit of Hollywood to your haunted house. So, and you want to use them sporadically. One maybe in, kind of in the front, maybe one in the back, maybe one in the middle, mixed with all your smaller animations of pop out or jump out, and so on and so forth. But hey, this is great, it's impressive, and it makes this room look like we spent a lot of money when we really didn't. So he was, I don't know, about $6,000. These barrels and crates are only a few hundred dollars, corrugated steel. This room really isn't that expensive, but it looks a lot more impressive than it is. We're trying to mix up everything, okay? We've got all these different sections of walls. You know, we're mixing up cinder block to um, corrugated steel to bricks. Now, you come in this room, and we've already come in here before, and you look at this cool thing that we talked about that we left because we just thought it was incredible. Now, look how we've piled the barrels back there, okay? And by the way, they're not welded together or anything but once we paint them and make them look like there's you know like slime and acid whatever dripping out it's gonna look fantastic and imagine like a couple zombies mixed in here and maybe some dead bodies and we talked about the chain link fence little maze now let me tell you if we had a lot of money which we don't we're running on a real shoestring budget this chain link fence right here can come down it can come down okay and we can put up a wall here and a door jam here, and guess what? Now we can build another really, really radical scene. We could go to a trade show, we could see a vendor, and he's got some really, really cool prop, okay? Some really neat stuff, or you come across some medical stuff or whatever, and you really want to punch up your haunted house. Well, this chain link fence maze right here, uh, it's cool, but guess what? You take this L, that piece, that piece, you put a wall there, and now you've got a scene. And that's how you develop a haunted house from scratch. When you are on a budget, you take areas that could one day be a scene where you could take out two walls, three walls, and you got a nice little square, an in and an out, and then you can theme it. And I think that's the most important way to make your haunted house better in the future when you're trying to enhance them. You want to like just take a room that wasn't there and add it and make it the best one in the whole place. 
You take one room, wasn't there, you spend all your money on it, all your time on it, and you have this spectacular room, so when your customers come through that room, they're like, wow, this wasn't here before because it's the best room in the whole place. Right now, because we're on a budget, we're trying to create a really nice, detailed haunted house. We wanna make it look like we spent a lot of money on the whole thing. That's why you have this here, because we don't have the money for another scene. But look at this, we made a chain link foot fence maze, and we put barrels in the corners. And you should see how they're offset too, because you don't want anything to be organized, okay? So these will get welded in place when we determine, after we get all of our props, that this is the appropriate way to go. So we're trying to make things look a little bit more out of place, like it's just like randomly thrown here and there. This wall could use some pipes, it could use an electrical box and it'd be ready to go. Now, since this is just an average scene, we could go to a, a company and buy those crackle box type things, and that would be a great little scare right here. So we're building like a medical lab, and like I said earlier in our, another part of the video, if you want to learn how to paint and detail and theme, you need to buy our other videos, How to Detail Your Haunted House, I think part one, two, three, four, five, and there's also a video I think called How to Renovate Your Haunted House, and we talk about and we show you, physically show you how we did all this. Now look, that, that's still wet. We just did this, okay? And as I've already said, it's grouting mixed with real tile with this concrete type of stuff that we hand put, smashed all over the wall. We added trim, we mixed it up by painting the bottom green and the top white. This room needs to be aged. When you see this cheap tile board and you see this ugly seam, you would not see that if all the tiles were real. So this is a good spot right here to put a lot of heavy aging, a lot of black, or to put a lot of this concrete mixture in these cracks and hide that. But it takes a little effort, it takes a little time, but it'll look really good. So let's go and look at the, another room that looks just like this, finished. As you can see, we've got all these tin things and whatever. But we did something a little bit different, and I stressed to you this whole video on how you got to mix it up, okay? So we've gone back to the really cheap tile board mixed with the tiles, okay? But we did something different. We put trim down the middle. You can see the trim here, but you see how it's broken because this part is doesn't look, you know, looks like things have fallen off. It looks really good. You see the floor, trim is missing. Small piece of trim, tile, broken out, whatever. And we painted the bottom half green and the top half white. So when you walk through this haunted house, we don't want it to all look the same. Like, wow, they bought a lot of tile board. No, every room looks a little different and it can be done when you're building a haunted house from scratch, if you put the time in. This room doesn't, it actually looks a lot better and it doesn't actually cost any more than any of the other rooms. And when you build these door jams, tell me that when you do a different theme, then it doesn't look so much better doing a door jam like this. It just looks so much more spectacular. Okay, so we all have the tunnels and we talked about the tunnels. So this is the ramp leading up to our new vortex black hole tunnel. And you can see we've done the corrugated steel here um, with all the neat trim. And if you come over here, and it's really dark, it's gonna be hard for you to see. So come on over here and look at the tunnel. Look how neat this is. The tunnel is all corrugated steel, okay? And it's just a point that I wanna make that you don't have to go to the show and say, hey, let me buy that tunnel with canvas that doesn't look that real. This actually looks like it is something, okay, with the corrugated steel. So we have a, a black hole tunnel in TerraVisions in our 3D haunted house, but we wanna put one here because we want this haunted house to have a bang. And as I spoke about the, the spider monster, okay, this tunnel gobbles up a lot of space. It's a cool effect. People really like it, okay? But we don't wanna do what we have already, a spinning tunnel with canvas. So we thought out of the box, and it's decked out in corrugated steel. We actually asked the vendor, could he make it this way? He had to put a little stronger motor on it, but yes, he made it and it's spectacular and I think people are gonna like it. And maybe you can shoot a laser down this hallway. So when you're trying to do things on a budget, you've gotta spend your money wisely. Hey, I want to have like fireworks. I wanna have like five big things to shoot off. And then we'll have some cheaper rockets and then we'll have little firecrackers to throw around. Little things to play around with, 
couple rockets to shoot off, but then the big spectacular things, you know, that fire off for a few minutes. And that's what this is, but it's also thinking outside the box. And that's how you build a haunted house from scratch. We are really nearing the end of construction and everything. And it's hard to believe that we actually did this in a very, very short period of time. I mean, we've only been working on it for roughly one month. And I think that when you, when you got this video, you're like, man, you know, they're not actually showing us how to build anything. They're just talking a lot. That's the point of the video. I hope I want to like tell you because um, I want to point out step by step how we're thinking this through. And this is a very, very detailed haunted house at this point, and we spent very little money. And that's what we're trying to help you understand. And if you want uh, to learn detail tips and stuff like that, go to hauntedhousesupplies.com, and we have all kinds of how-to detail uh, videos. Now, I want to tell you, uh, we looked at our facade a few days ago, and now we're adding a queue line, okay? Now, you might notice there's no fence here. There's a reason for that, okay? There's a reason for that, and you won't understand it till later, okay? But here's how you're able to infuse a whole bunch of detail that makes sense to the facade without breaking the bank. This is just chaining fence, and it's really just spray painted to look rusty. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna, our guests will come in here, they'll come around, they'll go around, you know, over there to the entrance, and it's going to be fantastic. So don't be afraid to like use something. I mean, does this chain link fence look good? I think so, especially when we put red spinning lights everywhere and so on and so forth. It's going to be fantastic. We've talked about these walls quite a bit, and you may or may not notice what's different. We added a splash of pukey green to add a little color. You know, whenever you're theming and you're aging, you always tend to use a lot of dark colors because, you know, oil dripping down the walls, aging, water, you know, mold and stuff like that. A lot of times it can be, you know, darker color. So, hey, go back in and put a little splash of something bright to punch it up. Now we've started to add little, little touches. And let me tell you something, today I spent like four or five hours running around to these junk stores trying to find like the simplest little things like this little keypad I don't know what it exactly went to at one time or another but I only paid two dollars for it and guess what it would be like you know a keypad to get in that door you know you can't ever buy enough of these little fuse boxes and stuff like that and uh, you know you can put them here and you can put them there and they look fantastic we started out a little flare to this room a clock doesn't hurt uh, a fuse box and it starts to fill the room here in a few uh, a day or two we're gonna fill this space right here and this room's gonna look fantastic we added a gun rack okay because that's a security room so here's where their guns are now I want to stress to you that whenever you're doing and you're putting props on the wall I like to focus on what you walk into not what you walk away from okay in other words if I'm coming in a room this way okay uh, and and I'm supposed to turn that way, I don't want to necessarily focus on a room, on a wall that I don't see. So in this particular case, I walk right into my gun rack, so I want to be able to see my gun rack, my weapons. This is a good spot for a really cool prop. We've used a keypad, we haven't aged it. And look at this piece right here. It looks kind of corny right now, okay, because it's not painted and blended into the wall. But hey, we got it, it adds some texture, it adds something different to the wall, okay, and it's breaking up the monotony of, say, bricks and stone. And then here's another fuse box. This is a great way to add a lot of detail and a lot of realism to your hunting house for very little money. Now we're back in our big giant bug room, and as you can see, we got our fan up in the ceiling, we've got our grated steel over a door that's fantastic, and now we've just added this big giant fuse box type thing. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's absolutely huge. It's absolutely big and it takes a lot of wall space because, and, and I can't stress enough that when you have these uh, monotonous looking rooms like we have with all this corrugated steel, after you age it, it looks much better. But 
you need to cover and try to cover as much of the walls as you can to break up the monotony. Now we've gotten a little farther along here too. As you can see, now we have this permanent pipe and this was a great repurposing of something that we were able to find. And I can tell you right now, if you were able to find something like this, you would pass it by most of the time. But now you can see that a piece like this, which you probably could have bought for a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks or whatever, has made a fantastic bang in this room. I mean, it's really punched this room up. Now this room is gonna get finished. It's gonna have a couple of animations, some bloody bodies, some blood and some other things. And it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. As we've been talking in this video, pretty much the whole video long, we've been talking about using multiple wall textures. And we haven't used that many in this haunted house. We've used uh, vacuum form brick. We've used vacuum form uh, cinder block. We've used corrugated steel. And those are primarily our three main things that we've done throughout the whole entire attraction. Okay, but here, get this. We are building this like decontamination hallway, which is gonna be really cool. There's gonna be pipes and these things blink and it's gonna be fantastic. Okay, but we wanted to have things in between. For a show that we built, we had a much smaller version and we built these. Okay, and they look fantastic. We just have to put some you know some paint and stuff in here and this was great and as you can see here's another piece that we made but this is time consuming and it takes a lot of time so what did we do we got this vacuum form and when I seen it for sale I was like wow that looks kind of spacey and it does so it, it absolutely captures it and we're gonna put it in between each one of these spaces and this is like vacuum form can sometimes give you something that you couldn't build I won't I wouldn't even know the first step to making this other than making these panels, molding them and then making individual pieces. But it's going to look absolutely incredible. And what we're going to do, which is really key, is we're going to go ahead and leave the extra on and then we're going to take uh, one by threes and frame it in. Okay. And so that it'll have a one by three here with this like spiny little gap. And then these pieces right here. And I think it's going to look absolutely incredible. We're going to haze it down with a little uh, concrete just a little especially around the edges we're gonna paint it blend it in and it's gonna look fantastic so we we're able to create another look in the haunted house and these panels are only a hundred and some dollars a piece and we only bought eight okay now I'm gonna give you another really good tip for making your haunted house look really believable you see these things right here okay I was actually able to buy those from a department store and they're very cheap Okay, when you look at them, you know, they're for dormers or something like that, you know, on the top of your garage or whatever. And we have like four or five different styles of those. And we put them up because what did I say? I said, when you're walking into something and you're trying to break up the monotony, that breaks up the monotony. Okay, it's some kind of vent, who knows what it is. And then just to add a little flare, here's another one of these little keypads right here with a swiper. Who knows what it actually <laughs> opens it well it actually opens nothing but it looks great and you can find these all day long in the air conditioning heating section and places like that and you can get all different kinds and they look really good above door jams okay now we're in our medical lab and it's turning out fantastic let me tell you okay here look at this uh, a fuse box that has no fuses in it, it's just a face, but people don't know that. As you can see, if you back up a little bit, this is a table, okay? And this table didn't have a top, so we put plywood on it, and we're going to take our same exact uh, towel board and put it on the top and paint it, it'll look fantastic. And then we're going to put like a computer, an old computer monitor type thing that we bought that looks incredible. I mean, it's like right out of the 70s, it was great. And then what I like to do in my haunted house is, is I want people to come into the room and utilize every square inch of the room. So we want them to come in the room and around the room, okay? And in this case, we're coming around an animation that lunges up and at people. And it's absolutely great. And look at these cool props on the wall. I don't know what it is, but it's on the wall and it looks great. And just as another point, Look at this. Again, this is just plastic. It's painted. It goes over the door. It, who knows what it is, but it just breaks up the monotony. Instead of having everything top board, we made the green 
on the bottom, the white on the top. We put the trim in the middle. And as you can see, we've come in and we've added a little bit more color and eventually we'll add some blood and some other things. And here's a nice little seat in here. And by the way, it's a really great idea to have things up in the air, as you can see over here as well. Now, the key is that there's something below it so that you can't actually bang your head into it. Like over here, if you didn't have this, people could run underneath it and they could get it, you know, hit it, but you can't because you hit this. And these are all um, great ways to incorporate props. We really want them to come into the room, through the room, and I think we're doing a great job of breaking up the monotony of the same old thing. And I will say that we're, how we're gonna top this off, normally in the darkness we put full-blown roofs and everything, we don't have time for that, and that would be very time-consuming and very expensive. So we've decided just to camel the, the ceiling. That'll um, give it a little bit more believability, um, and it's better than nothing. The fun doesn't stop with the walls. Why not do something in the ceiling? Now these aren't completely painted or whatever, and these are pipes that would go in the ground for your house or something like that. And um, they have these nice beautiful flanges on the end and that's really important to have that to make it look believable. But to have three up there across the top of the room really gives it a very uh, uh, nice, incredible industrial feel and it breaks up the monotony again rather than every hallway being the same. This was very cheap to do. These three pipes, I don't know, they were 20, 30 bucks, whatever a piece. And then, you know, we bought the flanges and of course we have to finish painting. And then of course we added another keypad, which is really important. Okay, a couple more things like breaking up the monotony. As you can see right here, this is gonna be a, an actor scare box, which um, is where an actor can scare people from a multiple different directions. And I just wanna bring you into this particular scare box and show you that this will be a drop picture. So an actor can make a loud bang. He's also able to reach out and grab people here or here. Now what you're gonna see right here is if you can see, we have a nice little cove. Now we could make this an actor scare here as well and he'd have four little spots to get people. But because we wanna put an animation here, you can see we have a nice little three foot cove. So our animation can fit nice and easy. That's gonna come out of the, the wall and it's a wall that people walk into and that's important when you're gonna have these things coming out. You don't want them necessarily on the side, you want them to jump out and scare them, okay? And our actor has plenty of room to move here and here. Look at this, this is just a really cheap vent that you get you know, for your house. Cheap, one by three, you smear a little concrete on it, you paint it and it's fantastic. Now look at this pipe here, it looks great, but it's not gonna work because somebody's gonna run into it and they're gonna break it off. So I've had to have them replace it. But I'm showing it to you because I want you to understand, you don't wanna put things that people can run into that they can break. And in this case, we would rather put it here because you see that seam right there? It would look great right on that seam and it would hide that seam and it would be fantastic and very cheap. Because look at this office door. And it even has a plate on this as office. This is a great spot right here to put a door. And guess what it does? It breaks up the monotony. We're actually not going to put this door here. We're going to put a CGI door, which is even better. Um, it's a CGI that we made. And we sell CGI effects, by the way, at hauntedhousesupplies.com. And look, we've used another one of these just right over the door. We think it looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's very cheap. I think that was, you know, four or five dollars. Okay, so now we're working on our jail. And this is another wall technique that we're using. And it's a faster one than doing it the really hard way, which is cutting holes in the walls, putting the bricks recessed in, and then concrete around it. This is the cheaper way. You smear your concrete all around the edges, and then you come in and you just blast the walls with concrete. And as you can see, we're doing something in here that's gonna be quite unique. Here's our, kind of like our jail door entrance. And what we've done here, as you can see, we've put one by six on the, the bottom and one by uh, three or four, whatever, four, um, and to break up the monotony. So we're making like panels. And this is just kind of giving it a different look. But look at the other thing that we're doing, which is kind of interesting. We're building these big giant blocks up in the air. We're gonna concrete them, and they're gonna look like 
you know, concrete box because we're in a, uh, a jail cell. The best way to do it would be to cut holes out of it, put foam in it, put pieces of rebar so it looks like it's losing pieces, but we're doing this project on a budget. You look down this hallway and you see like almost like, you know, the, the cinder block or the, the concrete block look up there. And this is what I was talking about. This is going to be a jail cell. And basically this is going to be framed in it and then the actor will be able to bang, 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 bang. And it'll be really loud and it'll be really scary. And as we come down here, there will be another actor over here who will be able to do the same thing. So this area is going to be extremely loud. Okay, so we're getting a lot farther along with our haunted house to the point where we're actually starting to put some props in. Whenever you're trying to do a haunted house on a budget, okay, we talked earlier about trying to have some impactful scenes and then trying to have some scenes that are, they look like you spent a lot of money, but you really didn't. And one of the things that we like to do in our haunted houses a lot is to do like freezers, okay? And so this is going to be kind of like a freezer, meat locker type of thing. Um, so you see you have hanging bodies and a lot of vendors sell these, okay? And so then your customers like weave around through them. And if you come around the corner a little bit, you'll see there's some torsos, okay? And so on and so forth. And then we just really simply decorated the room with some barrels here and there. And of course we'll paint them. Uh, we put a nice fan in here, we're gonna paint that. A couple um, uh, uh, electrical boxes and some pieces or whatever but at the end of the day this is a very cheap scene to do and it's very effective and people really hate the fact like look at this hideous thing they don't want to touch that okay but they have to to get through the room and so and when they touch it uh, every time when people walk through these things are always moving like kind of like they're animated so it's actually a really cheap scene to do and uh, it's very effective as well all right, now we're in our really cool hallway we're doing. Now you're seeing that we're putting in the pipes. And look over here on this one. See, there's three pipes. There's one pipe that's a different size than the other two. And I think that's kind of important because you want to, like, mix it up. So where we're at with this, clearly, it needs to be painted, okay? And once it's painted, it's going to look fantastic. Now, I want to show you this, too. Okay. This cost, I don't know, not even 10 bucks or whatever, okay? And so we got these other holes. We put this vacuum form in here, and this is part of building a haunted house. You plan to put pipes in, okay? They won't fit because we actually plan to do something different here, but then we found this, we put that. That's all part of building a haunted house, is being willing to make improvements or adjustments or changes based on uh, problems you face. So we've got these holes built, okay? Well. A pipe's not going to fit through the vacuum form, so we came up with this solution right here. So it's actually going to be great. They'll shove in there, okay? Now tell me that, that doesn't look like it belongs, okay? That thing's like five, ten bucks. And look over here. This is just a little vent for your uh, for your house, for your floor. You Screw it right in. And the real key is once this is in, once it's installed. Then it's, you know, aging it, painting it, and everything else. But the hallway looks fantastic now that it has the pipes in. So now we're going to have to buy a whole bunch of these, and we're going to put them in all the holes, and it'll look like some kind of vent. It's, a, it's just another part of building a haunted house from scratch is being willing and able to improvise. Okay, now we're getting into a scene that we're getting a little farther, and we're starting to put animations in. These are really cheap animations, okay? And they actually scare people. All they do is lean out, Okay, uh, you know, and they make a lot of noise. We have this open canvas right here. We thought this would be fantastic for this kind of like hideous creature. And we're gonna disguise it by filling up the whole center with barrels to kind of sort of make it look like he's standing on barrels. And I can tell you when you're doing a zombie theme, which is what this video is about, barrels are gonna be great. Right now, all you see is black barrels, but we're gonna paint them. We're gonna make them look slimy. We're gonna put stickers on them. They're gonna look fantastic. But that's how we would improvise here. We don't wanna have this look like it's hanging out in midair. So clearly the easiest way to fix it is barrels. We'll pile up a bunch of barrels. You won't even know that he's being held up by anything but standing on barrels. And it's gonna be fantastic after we paint them. Now we looked in our chain link fence maze area. Anytime you've got chain link fence like this, you're going to have big giant corners. Now you can see we welded the barrels together. We're going to shove them in the corner. 
You see the brackets on the floor, they're welded onto the barrels. We'll nail them into the, the ground and they won't move, okay? We have space here for a zombie. Over here again, we have more barrels, but look what we've done here. We've offset them, okay? This is very important. That one barrel, at least, is touching the wall because it adds a lot of support when you run into it, okay? But you don't want every barrel to be just stacked on top of each other. You want it to look disorganized because it's a haunted house. We welded the barrels together and you see the brackets, brackets on the floor. In this corner, as you can see, the gap between these two is different from the other two that we showed you. And then of course, like we talked about adding things like electrical boxes. And then there's nothing wrong with one of your barrels being a single, okay? You want it to make it look unorganized. They, they fill it up, they make it look like, you know, hey, it's real, it's uh, got a lot of stuff going on, something crazy was going on here, everything's unorganized, because that's how it would be. But you always want to make sure when you put these barrels in, or props, that you get them as far into the corner as possible, because people do run into them. So this will take some of the stress off the brackets by having them being able to hit something. And then, of course, there's nothing wrong with good old fashioned monsters and zombies in the corner. So you don't always have to have barrels, you could also have zombies. Our scientific lab is getting a lot farther along. We have a door here that goes from one area to another. One of the best ways to keep people away is to put like a barrel or a crate or a prop or something like that, or even this counter if it was caddy corner where you can still walk around it. But one of the things that we like to do is put zombies and monsters. So they're going to naturally go in the direction that you want. Now these are what we call leaner animations. They're very cheap. They came from the 70 And all they do is they got a speaker in and all they do is lean forward. It's almost like an actor, sort of. They're very cheap, they're very effective. Now this is an animation. This is a more of an expensive animation. And he comes out at people. People have really, I mean, he's very dirty right now but have thought he was really exciting. But one of the things we like to do with our characters is put them as close as we can to make them seem realistic. So it looks like he is taking the ribs off of this guy and once we get him cleaned up and re-bloodied up or whatever, he's gonna look fantastic. Now come around the other side. When you buy these things from vendors, a lot of times they have these plates on them, okay? So we're just gonna take our plasma cutter and we're gonna rip it right across the back and it's like it won't even be there. And this is how you set up your scenes. You want to fill up your walls, and if you put something like this on the wall, you can't have somebody have the ability to like run into it and give themselves a concussion. So you gotta have something under it that's wider than this. And that's what we've done in this whole entire room. It's starting to look fantastic. And once we paint it up and theme it and get it done, it's gonna look great. Okay, so now we're in another medical scene, and we've, we've seen this scene a few times. Now, I, I love any animation that you can buy that sends you into the room like a horseshoe. And so you're using every square inch of the room. And that's what this one does. And I also love animations, okay? See how it goes out? Not all the way, doesn't cross the line. So we still have plenty of room to get around it. It's not gonna hit anybody. But this is a scary animation. And it's, it's uh, creating two purposes. It's making me horseshoe around the whole entire scene. And it's scaring people, you know, as they, get here, boom, they get hit with it. It's fantastic, we absolutely love it. And as we see, we've really started to detail this room up quite quite well. And let me explain one thing to you. You see, we've got another barrel, we've got a zombie. Now you can't see the zombie going down this way, but when you come around this corner, you walk right into this zombie through the chain link fence, and we think that is a great way to utilize these type of characters. When you're walking, you always want to have see something visual because seeing something like this distracts people from the real actors. Okay, now we talked about our jail quite a bit and it's turning out fantastic. So this is really more or less a scare box that we've made to look like a jail. And we've themed it a little bit with a couple props or whatever. And look at this. This is a great little scare. It's just pillow box that have been mounted to the bottom of the jail and it's got steel on the top so that the the, um, the cell door or whatever can get out but now your actor can make a lot of noise anything that makes noise is great and you know what we picked this piece up for a hundred bucks 
the pillow box, the steel to hold it in. I mean, you're not even talking about $200 when this scene is done. It's going to be an absolute great scare. Rather than having every actor have the same thing, jump out, whatever, you want to have some stuff. So in this case, the actor will be exposed and he'll be like, ah, whatever. And he'll go like that and he'll get a great scare. We've been talking a lot about trying to cover walls. Now, we talked about um, having like things like this, like a old uh, electrical boxes and things like that. Hey, it doesn't hurt to put condu. You can buy this stuff and you want to get the biggest one they have. They actually have ones bigger than this. And there's nothing wrong with running it on the wall, okay, running it in, fraying the wires, okay. Now, when we go in to paint this, we'll definitely paint this. We'll paint a lot of black spray paint all over it so it looks like it burned. Get another one, another power box. We got frayed wires needs to be painted to make it, make it look like, you know, you don't want to leave it silver. So we haven't got that far because we just added it. This is a nice touch. See this, this cool little vent, okay? Obviously, that's not real, okay? But it looks really cool. And it's just screwed to the wall. And this is the biggest thing you want to do. You don't want to have the monotony, and I see this in a lot of haunted houses, the monotony of all these tiles, okay? You want to add some concrete. You want to cut the tiles out and then add some real tile pieces and some grouting. And then we, of course, we've got our little, you know, control boxes and stuff like this. And then of course it doesn't hurt to throw a barrel in or a fuse box cover. By the way, it has no fuse box behind it. It's a fuse box cover and it looks fantastic. These are little things that make a difference when you're trying to make a haunted house look really cool, especially when you're doing it from scratch. This is a really quick and painless Thing you can do in your haunted house. You see these heads, and look how fantastic they look. They're from a company called Ghost Ride Productions. And you just put them in people's way uh, in a very basic hallway. Look at this one, his brains are splattered everywhere. And then people have to kind of do one of these numbers, okay, to get through them. And uh, they're very disgusting. And what happens is when people walk through here, they keep bumping into them, so they're always moving. It makes them seem kind of animated. But, uh, you know, it's not the most realistic thing in the world, although it is pretty sadistic um, that if somebody had a bunch of heads hanging around everywhere. But at the end of the day, whenever you're just trying to, say, make a hallway uh, fun for your haunted house, this is a very simple way to do it with heads uh, or bloody bodies or whatever. Very simple, very painless, and it's not very expensive. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple other things. We've already shown you this. Now look, these little signs you can buy, they're plastic. They look really cool. We're gonna dust them with black spray paint, get rid of the screw holes by dusting with spray paint. But these little uh, signs are really cheap, and they, uh, they add some color, and they add some flair, in my opinion. We also have now painted our electrical lines so now they look blended into the wall they look much much better you see more places we've added the signs we are going to paint them and blend them in uh, you know your fuse boxes your electrical lines have all been painted you can't take some black spray paint and spray paint around it so it looks like maybe possibly it kind of could put on fire who knows so these are really important things to add like little things like the signs electrical boxes and make sure you paint them and blend them in all right, we're gonna just touch on a lot of things because we're getting really close to the haunted house being done. We talked about, you know, we're adding these signs everywhere. They're really cool. Um, this is gonna be our control room. Every TV is gonna have like this audio and video feeds where you see like zombies roaming around everywhere going crazy. As you can see, we've stacked quite a few of these things. Now, you know, they will fall off. They're gonna have to be glued down, attached or something. Now look at this, like where we put the chain link. It's a perfect spot for like a zombie. And you might want to note that it says SWAT. He's a SWAT team zombie. And this is the, you know, the security room. So it makes a lot of sense for him to be there. Now another thing I want to talk about is these freezer strips, okay? So we're putting them in between these door jams. They look fantastic because we, want, we don't want you to be able to see into the next scene, okay? We're going with clear freezer strips everywhere you're supposed to walk. And then when you're not supposed to walk, we're going black. Either way, black or clear, we are painting them. So we're just trying to blend them in and you can push right through. Now this is painted, it looks blended in, it looks fantastic. The point that I was trying to make to you guys was look how dumb this thing looked, 
okay? And now that it's all blended in, it looks like it belongs here. And you have to take the blends down below. So if you paint this here, you gotta make it look like it, you know, was here. It got dirty, it was spitting something out of the fan or whatever, and it stripped all down here. And this was a great spot for a uh, high voltage fan because it, it's black, it's yellow, it blends right in, it looks fantastic. Okay, so this is a drop picture for an actor. This was a great spot to put one of these little plastic signs. Hopefully it'll confuse uh, or trick the customers into thinking that it wasn't, uh, it's not a drop picture and it's nice and framed in. And by the way, if you look over here, see these are non-painted clear strips. Okay, so you can see right through them. Um, they're great. They add a little claustrophobia to the room and they're fantastic. I would use them all the time. But you'll see on the floor we got these, these angle braces and they're screwed into the thing. Now this one's not done because it needs to be secured in the back as well. But anytime you put any kind of props in your haunted house, make sure they're secured in the front and the back. And I wanted to show you this one because the truth of the matter is even though it's secured on the front and the side, uh, I could literally just break this right off. You have to have it in the front and the back. So look at our awesome fan. Now that we painted it and we blended it in and we framed it around with wood, now it looks fantastic. And we got all these electrical lines going in it. Look, we made like a, almost like a puzzle with them. If you come over here and you can see that and you got the buttons and we bought, and I bought these things for almost nothing. Look, they're screwed in there, it's screwed in there. Everything looks legit now, okay? It looks fantastic. There's a couple barrels here and there, okay? And you know, uh, we kind of invented the idea of having hanging bodies. We had a couple vendors make them for us. And so when I went back and had these made, I said, hey, nobody's ever done like, you know, mutated hanging bodies where they've always done humans or pigs or animals. So I had these mutated ones made. So they were a little bit different. These, some experiments gone wrong here, and this is fantastic. Now look, these are from a company called Gorglore. When you're trying to do your haunted house cheap and you're trying to add a little flair, these are great. They're called barrel toppers. Look, you just throw them on a barrel. Okay, you're gonna have to glue them down. Okay, then you're gonna to wanna to pour blood all over here. Okay, it looks fantastic. But let me point out something to you. I come in the room here. So you don't have a gazillion dollars to put a barrel topper here, one there, one there, one there. So if you're going to add one here and there and everywhere, okay, you wanna have it to where it's the focal point when you walk in the room. So I'm over there, this is the focal point, that's why I put it right there. This is an animation. All he does is lean forward. He's got a speaker in him. Oh! We have placed a barrel and secured it and a crate so you can't get to him, okay? So he leans up like this and he's like, ah! This is naturally secured. Look, you have a crate here that's not properly secured. A barrel, a crate, he's nice and sandwiched in. You can still get to him if you have to. And look at this nice little display that we've made. Crate, crate, barrel, 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 barrel. Okay, they're all offset. We've put a couple stickers on them. We got our pipe in the background, okay? And we're starting to secure them. We've cap welded them together. Okay, here, there, whatever. That makes them stronger. But now look at this. This was very cheap. These are cheap crates. These are cheap barrels. And a couple cheap stickers. And it's starting to look fantastic. It's absolutely looking great. Now, I wanna show you over here. Okay, again, these are not secured, but they have to be. You can see the L brackets already been put on. We're gonna have to weld these barrels together. Now, we wanna make sure that nobody can trip over them, but you see this plate for this monster? Look how big that is, okay? We wanna cover that up. We wanna make that look like it's not there. So, as you can see, this monster, he moves side to side in the whole shebang. So, we have placed the barrels so it looks unorganized. That's the key. So the monster can do, still do his thing. We'll pour blood all over the place. Like, you know, he's been killing everything in sight and it's gonna be great. Okay, so this is our like decontamination hallway. We've showed you this already, this vacuum form, and you can see how we've added a whole lot of synergy here and there, and concrete look. We've painted it nice and nasty. We've added these little vents over here and we painted them. We added these vents over here. So the, uh, these are on this side, those are on that side. We have our, uh, pipes that go all the way down and now look at this because this is fantastic see now this is an area where we went ahead and put like a roof over the top and it looks much better it looks much 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 better and by the way this is from a company called wind hinges creek and you can actually program these and the lights blink and that it's fantastic 
But all this stuff is very, very cheap. It's not, it's not done with like a ton of money. These are cheap pipes, okay, the pipes are in here. And there's a fog effect that will spray the people and they'll get sprayed with fog and, and they'll be uh, not expecting it and it's really cool. Okay, so like this is an animation that we bought from Unit 70. See, he moves around and his arms flail around or whatever. And you can see he's on a really big stand back there, okay? So what we did was we secured him into the floor and we put barrels thrown all around him, okay? So now it looks like he, maybe he's leaping off or he's standing on the barrels. Barrels are cheap and they've created a really nice uh, uh, way to disguise things, okay? Now this animation looks like it belongs there. It looks fantastic. This room, this whole area is starting to shape up. We added a barrel topper here because it was a focal point. Remember that? Um, and we added a sticker because it was a focal point. And we start to wind our way through, okay? Again, we have barrels, another sticker, offset. See, those are stacked on top of each other. Then you got one, then you got two offset, then you got two offset again, and eventually we'll get him up here. And we added another sticker on there. It's looking great. And then of course we have, you know, a monster here in the corner. And look how great this is. It didn't look like this before. See, we added shellac and made it look like, you know, it's rusting or leaking something. It looks absolutely great. This is something that you get from, a, you know, a home improvement store. It's very cheap. A couple of these, this is actually some kind of swiper thing. A couple of keypads, we're ready to go. We have to paint these, but uh, we'll get there. So one of the things you'll notice, we've actually blended everything together now. We've added a couple medical charts. Uh, we talked about fake stuff there. But you see how they're L-bracketed in? Okay, so they won't move. Okay, uh, that one's not. These TVs are. You said the whole place is infected? Oh, okay, we'll get out as soon as we can. Uh, phones, anything, it doesn't matter. Little goofy stuff here, these little medical charts that I got offline. Nice, disgusting sink. And this is again another animation we're just calling a leaner. He just leans out with a speaker in him and he scares you. You can't uh, go far enough. I mean, this phone's on here. I'm sure a lot of people will try to pick it up and, and answer it. Now you come around the corner and what do we see? We got a monster on the other side. We got a barrel in front of him and it was a nice spot for another barrel topper. This is like creating a visual, visually exciting scene right here. It's really disgusting and it doesn't take hardly any space, so it's absolutely great. Now this is an animation that we've just added. I really like to horseshoe people around through the rooms. I really do because I think that's great. And what he does is he comes up and he scares people right here. He's gonna get them. And that is gonna really give a nice little punch. We're kind of concerned about uh, people running into this so we put a nice barrel behind it. Everything's looking great. Let's look at a couple more things So now we're in our like jail area. This is where all the infected people were being kept. We have another leaner Animation we got two barrels blocking it and look at these. These are fantastic. One of them just Drops on there. So it looks like it's an open barrel and then of course we put a sticker on it And of course this is going to be our really cool featured animation where all the zombies push the crate over like they're trying to attack you. Now, I want to take you into the jail where we've done a lot of work, okay? We have flanking jail, but look up on the top. That is what's awesome. We built these little boxes all the way around to give it a jail cell block, you know, a cell block look. And then we put the grate over it, you know, because we're trying to keep something in here. See? Our jail here for our actor. And it was really important when you do when you work with your actors, my actors can go through there and jump out there. They can come down here and shake that. We're going to go in there and take a look at that in just one second. But these are really important things. Now look, when you come down this hallway, look at that up above. That looks so fantastic. The whole thing gives you this claustrophobic feeling. And that's what we want to accomplish. We talked about hallways. We got the hanging heads. We added the barrel, the sticker, the barrel topper. And then this whole entire hallway, you have to like walk around through these hanging heads. But here's what I want to show you. Here is a steer box. And this is very important to building a haunted house from scratch. So right here, I can actually move one of these back just yay far. And when those people come, you know, I can scare them. Okay. But guess what? Okay. 
I can also come over here, okay? And bang this. I can also walk over here and bang this. That's the key about actors. If you, uh, you're, you're, I don't know if you're getting the perspective right. So I can scare people from that direction. Then they gotta go around a whole entire scene. But then you get them again. So when you build these, what we call scare boxes, okay? You wanna put them strategically throughout your haunted house so that an actor is not just waiting forever for somebody to come. I can scare the people in front of me, and then maybe there's no one behind them, I'll go to the side, I'll see somebody down there, I'll rattle them over there, and then I'll just turn around and look out this uh, uh, area here. And then also here's the key, when your haunted house is extremely busy, okay? So let's say I shake that cage right there and I scare them, but there's like a whole conga line behind them, okay? So I'm gonna abandon that station because people way behind have seen it. And I'm gonna go hit them from another direction and another direction. And then I'm gonna come back to the, the shaking thing, the shaking cage, and then by the time I get there, there'll be a whole new group of people there. And that's the key when you're building these scare boxes. You wanna put them in areas like strategically all through the maze so that you're getting people that way, this way, that way, and this way, and it's all different sections of the maze. And that's all part of designing your maze. Okay, one of the other things that we designed in this haunted house since we were building it from scratch is our actor's room. We put it right in the middle of the maze. Since this is a secondary haunt, I wanted everything to stay with it, their masks, their costumes, since it was a zombie themed haunted house. Even if it was a clown themed haunted house, all the costumes are essentially the same. So everybody in here is gonna be wearing lab coats and um, jumpsuits with zombie masks and things like that. This also gives us access to our black hole tunnel for repair. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this little room out to hang all the costumes and hang all the masks. And you would wanna do that by simply, you know, buying, and I'm gonna show you in our actor's room downstairs. You can buy these things online where you screw them into the wall and you can sit masks on them. So I'll make this whole wall masks and this whole side here costumes. And so everybody should be able to come in here very quickly and get dressed. Because in a zombie themed haunted house, you know, you can have, uh, a very, very simple plan. Zombies are not hard to deck out. Okay, one of the really important things when you're building a haunted house from scratch is safety. So what we decided to do was build our haunted house so that two-fourths uh, two of the entire haunted house, you could walk around it. Why? Well, look at this. So you're in a corner of the haunted house, okay? And by the way, I had mentioned black. Black means don't go through, okay? Clear means go through. So if there was an emergency, we can bring them out of this corner of the haunted house and follow me. And by the way, another middle section. I want you to look down this hallway right here. What do you see? Well, you see people can come out of here, but they also could be anywhere in the middle here of the haunted house, we can take them straight down here, okay? Bring them down here, and this is where our exit is actually going to be right here. It's being cut out of the, the building. So this is where the exit is. So we can take people out of the haunted house very, very, very quickly. Now look, here is another emergency access corridor. Let's come on down. Okay, what do we see? Access. Access. Haunted house wiggles through that way. Another section. Uh, that's access to fix our black hole tunnel. Come here. Access. Doctor's lab. Access. Straight shot right to the exit of the haunted house. We're right back to the lobby, okay? The key when you're designing a haunted house from scratch is to make sure that you have ways to cut through the whole thing. I talked about the scare boxes. The scare boxes are also cut throughs. So that's why the scare boxes need to be strategically placed all through the maze so I can literally walk in the beginning and get to the end in less than 60 seconds. And that's very important. So the actors can scare people on this side, that side, this side. They can walk over here and scare somebody from that side but all different directions of those scare boxes are affecting different areas of the maze. And by the way, when it's really, really slow and you're not running as many actors, one actor can work multiple rooms. 
but not only can he work multiple rooms, he's also able to take people through rooms in an emergency and get through the haunted house quicker and you saw all the access points on two sides of the maze so you don't have to walk far and you can find your way out and get to an exit quickly that is very 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 important when you're designing your maze and that's why when you're designing it on paper that's why i suggest you do it with a pen and a piece of a piece of uh, graph paper and a pencil so you can just keep modifying quickly 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 until you've got something you like and then you can lay it out in cat or whatever you want so that's it that's how you build a haunted house from scratch and as you look around over there you see piles and piles of plywood and you look around everywhere you see trash and you see the place is not done and there's many other things that need to be done we got to run the fog we got to get the animations hooked up we have to do lighting and sound and all that these are all important components to finishing off your haunted house but when you're building your haunted house from scratch you have to learn from the mistakes that you made in the past you have to be able to tell yourself hey i'm building it from scratch you got to take all of the things that you've learned and incorporate them okay all the things you've seen from other people's haunts incorporate them um, because the layout is the most important thing uh, it's very important and two the other key aspect to making a new haunted house from scratch is that it's modular so that you can take it down when you're done or something doesn't work out that building or whatever you can get it apart and put it in a truck and take it somewhere else and start all over again these are all important things so some of you might have thought oh you know they're actually gonna cut wood and make stuff no that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to give you tips like if you came to a seminar so you can learn how to some of the key features to building a haunted house from scratch and we hope we helped you do that um, and I believe that we've done this haunted house fairly cheaply and there's nothing fancy in here other than some props from some companies uh, buying lots of junk I mean really we did this haunted house very cheaply and I think it turned out great and thank you and go to hauntedhousesupplies.com and look for our other videos on how to detail and how to build 3D haunted houses, you name it, how to foam carve. Uh, go to hauntedhousemagazine.com and get your, um, your uh, magazine subscription. Also, if you go to hauntworld.com, you click on find a vendor, you can find all the vendors that sold us all the cool stuff. It's, all the vendors are listed from the animation companies to the, uh, the latex, the monsters, the props, everything is on hauntworld.com. And make sure you go to hauntworld.com and get on our fright forums. Uh, you know, I'm always answering questions there. So if you have questions about this video, get on there, make a post, and we'll be happy to do that. So thanks again for getting on another one of our videos, and we'll see you very, very soon. Now watch this haunted house in action.
make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell ding 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 so you can get notifications because we're uploading all kinds of new content not content from 15 years ago but content that is relevant today and you know these videos that i'm uploading a lot of them are still very relevant i've had a lot of comments about that so leave a comment let us know what you thought of this video tell us what you think is different today so thanks for watching and until next time pleasant screams for scary videos and more, subscribe to our YouTube page, HuntWorld.com.